Hey everyone, how's it going? This is uh, Dylan with My Daily Dharma, and uh, this is podcast number two. <laughs> We're really excited about it. Uh, I'm actually here with a friend of mine. His name is Vivek Patel. Uh, I met him in Canada last year, and he is he's honestly one of the, one of the most incredible human beings I've uh, been lucky enough to meet. He's uh, got so many incredible talents, and, and just his soul is, is, is so beautiful. Um, but he's actually he, he's a conscious parenting educator. Uh, and he has some really great insights about that. He's also a martial artist, a dancer, a jewelry designer, um, and a dad. His, his social media is Meaningful Ideas, and his blog is MeaningfulIdeas.com. Vivek, you there? I'm here, here Dylan. Glad, glad to be here. here. Yeah, it's such a pleasure to have you on. Wonderful. So, Thank you for those kind words, by the way. I appreciate that. That's very nice. Of well, I, I, meant every, I meant every minute of it. You know, the moment we met, it was like, you know, soul brothers just totally connected on that level, and... <laughs> and here we yeah, are. I felt the same way. Most definitely, most definitely. Yeah. So, so Vivek, why don't you tell us a little bit about conscious parenting? Because that's that's kind of your you know hashtag, and that's what you talk most about. And and, and right. And so, I, I think a lot of people they don't really understand what what conscious parenting is. So, so would you mind enlightening us on the concept? Sure, sure I'd, I'd love, love to. to. You, know, you know, when, when I, I was <clears throat> when I was a kid, kid, I can remember being as little as three years old and thinking thinking, these adults just don't understand me. And I remember being punished for things that I had done and thinking, I don't understand why these people are punishing me. I'm just being myself. I'm just expressing myself. And it it really hurt at that young age. And I wanted to be understood. I wanted to be seen for who I was. I wanted my light to be seen. I wanted my joy and my intelligence to be seen. But it seemed like mostly it was my misbehavior that was being seen. And I remember being as young as three, like I said, and being punished one day and thinking, one day I'm going to have kids and I'm not going to do that to my kids. And I kind of always stuck in my head that I wanted to parent in a way that made my kids feel how special they were, how powerful they were, how beautiful they were, and that they didn't have to like, conform to some kind of external expectation in order to be worthy of love and acceptance. And that's kind of the foundation that I sprang from. My daughter is now 19 years old. And so it was close to 20 years ago when I started thinking about this, uh, this kind of stuff. I wanted to parent differently than I was raised. And so I decided I, I was going to do everything different. And what I did was I thought to myself, what are the qualities of a kind of person that I want my daughter to be? I actually was thinking about this before she was born. So it was what my child would be because I didn't know what the gender was going to be. And I realized that when I thought of the kind of qualities I wanted, I wanted her to be a loving person. I wanted her to be generous and kind. But I also wanted her to be self-confident and strong and powerful in herself and to know herself. And those things I realized couldn't really be taught if I took a position of authority and control over her because true respect, true love and true kindness can only be born in an atmosphere of freedom. If we try and control our kids and make them be kind or make them have respect, it's not genuine. And I wanted things to be genuine. So what I did was I took a view that instead of thinking of the behavior that was being shown at the moment, like a tantrum or like throwing something on the floor, instead of the behavior that was being shown, I would think of the skill and the attitude and the feeling behind the behavior, always looking behind the surface, underneath the surface, behind the, behind the curtain, what's happening. When you start to look at kids from the cause of what's happening, rather than just look at the effect, everything changes. And it's so, it's so wonderful. So when a kid has a tantrum, for example, It looks like they're trying to manipulate you or they're trying to be brats to get their way. But really what they're doing is they're expressing huge emotions that they have no words for. And they they haven't learned the skills to express those emotions in a socially understandable way. But they're not doing anything different than we are when we express our emotions. And when we express emotions, we don't want someone coming to us and saying, you have no right to those emotions. Behave like I want you to behave. That's not how we want to be treated. 
when I express emotions, painful emotions, I want a friend to say, I, I understand you, Vivek. I get you, man. What can we do about this? How can we work together to solve this problem? Isn't that what you want when, when you express difficult emotions to a friend? Oh, Dylan, are you there? there? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm asking, asking you. Isn't that, that something, something that, that is, wouldn't you prefer that personally? Oh, of course. No, no, and I, t- and I totally get that. It, it, it's, it's, it's so in alignment um, there. And if you look at a lot of spiritual teachings too, and they, they, they talk a lot about the, the whole conscious parenting concept. Um, but, but, you know, the interesting thing is, is that, you know, so many parents, I think that they look at the, <laughs> they look at the generation, you know, I guess now and, and they, you know, they, they, they use the adjectives, uh, you know, spoiled, entitled, uh, disrespectful. And so they think that, that, that good <coughs> children and, and, and good adults, human beings come out of a disciplinary environment, right? If they're, if they're punished, right. if they're, you know, uh, strictly held to a standard, what, what do you have to say right. about that? Yeah, well, the word discipline actually comes from the root word disciple, and it means to teach and to guide. It doesn't actually mean to control. And, and that's a, a, an important distinction, because if we think about wanting to teach respect to our kids, in order to do that, we have to understand what respect really is. Respect is not the behavior that you show. It's where that behavior comes from. It's the feeling inside. For example, you can have somebody who's really polite, really sweet, really says all the right things to your face, but then goes home and talks badly about you to their friends or their family. Or maybe they are looking for ways that they can take advantage of you. But they're very respectful from how they present themselves. That's not what I wanted. And that's not really teaching respect, is it? Real respect is wanting the mutual benefit for everybody involved. Caring for everybody's happiness, including your own. And doing this not because you're afraid of what will happen if you don't, but because you know it's the right thing to do from the inside out. And that's real discipline. When you can get your kid to do the right thing when no one's looking and when there's no consequence, but because they know it's the right thing to do, that's real discipline. That's real teaching. That's real education that will last a whole lifetime. When I talk at uh, parenting conferences and places like that, I'll often ask the audience, who here is working on self-development? And everybody puts up their hand. Almost everybody puts up their hand. And I said, and who here as a major component of that self-development work you're doing is part, part of that is learning to love yourself and accept yourself. And every hand goes up. And I say, why not give our kids that? You're 40 now and you're learning this. Why not give them that at the start? Because when we love ourselves and respect ourselves, and this is the thing about uh, words like entitlement and selfishness. That arrogance, entitlement, selfishness, those things don't come from thinking too much of yourself. They're actually compensations for not believing your worthiness, for not feeling confident, for not believing that you deserve friendship and love and acceptance. And so we have to overcompensate and we act arrogant and we act like everybody des- we deserve everything from everybody, but it's coming from a place of fear and smallness inside. Mm, if we won't. Does that, that make sense? sense? No, completely. And, 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 yeah. and, and I think that that's the distinction that a lot of people miss. You know, they just, they, they, they only look at the surface level and they don't look at the underlying, you know, cause. They look at the effect, not the cause. Exactly. So, you know, one interesting thing, though, that I've heard from a lot of parents is, is let's say they have, I guess, maybe older kids, you know, maybe in their teenage years or, you know, right. and they aren't necessarily living up to the, to the, expectations that, that were provided for them. You know, maybe they got involved in drugs or, or unhealthy activities. And, 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 and parents, I think they put a lot on themselves about that. You know, they, they, they really, I, I think, you know, look at themselves as failure as parents. And so, and so what is a constructive mindset that they can take towards that? Because I know so many parents, they really do beat themselves up over every little misstep that they, that they feel that their child has taken. So, so could you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, well, I kind of have, that's a really good question. Because it really hurts. I know that feeling intimately. <laughs> and it, it really, really does. does. Uh, it, it strikes the heart quite deeply. I have two like entirely opposite answers to that question, which is kind of funny. Uh, a lot of the time, a lot of the time, answers come in opposites because you know the yin yang is a really good model for how reality works. 
the yin yang, if you can see a yin yang in your mind, it's got the two halves to it, the black and the white half. And each of those halves have little dots in them. And it's the dots that are really the power of the yin yang, because it shows that the opposites flow into each other and they're really one. So when I, op- when I answer an intense question like that, I'll often give two opposing answers, but really they're one. So the first is you're not, you're not ultimately responsible for the choices your kid makes. Because they're, especially at, in the teenage years, maybe it's different when they're three. But, <laughs> but when they're t- in their teenage years, their personality is formed and they're making intelligent well, maybe not so intelligent sometimes, but they're making decisions. Independent is the word I was looking for. They're making independent decisions. And, and they're human beings with their own minds, with their own consciousness, and their own free will. And so for us to take that on as our mistake uh, makes it harder for us to actually engage with them because we're dealing with our own guilt. We're dealing with our own uh, f- f- feelings of shame. And when we're consumed with that, it may, it's like a filter. We can't see them for who they are and what they really need in this moment. So it, feeling shame like that hurts us and it hurts them. The best thing to do if we can is become really, really good at forgiving ourselves when we make mistakes. Really, really good at forgiving ourselves when we recognize that we could do better. Because we can always do better. I wake up every morning and I think, how can I be a better dad today than I was yesterday? How can I be a better person today than I was yesterday? And sometimes I achieve it and sometimes I don't. But I always have that thought in my head. Which means if somebody tells me, Vivek, if, when you're parenting, if you do this instead, if it's better, I'm not going to say, don't tell me how to parent. I'm going to say, thank you. I really want to know this information so I can think about it and see if it's good for me and good for my family. So the first... The first half of the answer is you're not responsible for your kids and their decisions. I mean, you're responsible for it, but you don't have to take responsibility for it in a way that eats you up. Mm -hmm. The second half of that answer, which is the other half of the Indian, is that you're deeply responsible for your kids' behavior. (laughs) (laughs) Everything you've done, every decision you've made has deeply influenced them, especially in their early years. So yes, it's understandable that you feel that guilt because you're responsible. Hugely responsible. And, and the reason I mentioned that is not to make you feel bad, because I don't want you to feel bad. Any, any parent listening to this, man, I don't want you to feel bad, because we're all doing the best that we can. Like I said, can we do better today than we did yesterday? That's what counts. And so maybe you have like hundreds of yesterdays because your kid's 15 or 16 or 13. But by taking that responsibility, if you can do it without shame, because that's what counts, taking responsibility without shame and without blame, because shame and blame inhibit you from action. But taking responsibility with love and with joy, even though it hurts, because it still hurts, but taking it with love and joy inspires action. And so if you can take responsibility for the mistakes of the past and embrace them, You can march boldly into the future and make a change. And you can interact with your kids in a way that can bring about harmony and bring about healing and bring about peace and bring about joy and connection. Because because all, Dylan, in my experience, man, I find all negative behaviors come from pain inside. And I also do... uh, I also do uh, self-empowerment workshops in prisons with my mother. Mm -hmm. And and so we deal with people who've committed violent crimes and have been in the system over and over and over again. And I see the same thing with them, that when I offer them unconditional love and acceptance, that's all that they've been missing. And it opens their hearts. And my mother does the same. My mother is this incredibly loving being. And she shines her love on these guys, and they open their hearts. And they suddenly want to do better. Mm. So, so it's, it's the, the same, same thing. thing. We can affect healing and connection with our kids. Because, oh, oh I know what I was going to say. I kind of got off track. I was, <laughs> I was going to say that all, all negative behaviors come from pain. And pain always comes from some kind of lack of love. Maybe it's a traumatic experience. Maybe it's many little experiences built up over time, like getting punished, getting hit, getting yelled at. And eventually we think, 
we're just not worthy of love. But the answer to a lack of love is more love. So if we're able to find more loving ways of interacting with our kids, then we can affect a greater change on them. Mm. Kind of both. both. Yeah, absolutely. No, no, I think that's, I think that's the most, it's this perfect answer. Now, I think there's one, one last really important question I want to ask about enlightened parenting or conscious parenting. I know that we could, you know, talk about it for ages, but yeah, I think that one thing that, that a lot of parents, they, they, they misinterpret is, is they think that being a good parent is, is, is being, uh, uh, you know, always there in your child's life constantly you know the, the helicopter parent the one who's always hovering and not giving their child the freedom to express themselves and i think that a lot of times pe- parents will tie especially mothers a lot of times because they have such a close close emotional connection with their children they will tie up their identity in their kids and so you find right. that they have they've lost their individuality they've lost their passion i mean you, you're an incredible father but you still you know you're a martial artist you're an actor you're a dancer you design jewelry you know you cha- right. you, you do things you, you are expressing yourself and you don't tie up your right. personal identity in, in in your in your daughters right and so could you speak a little bit about that because i think that's one of the biggest things that people struggle with really and and, and mostly mothers to be honest right right yeah, and part of the reason that happens for mostly mothers also is because a lot of the time the fathers are out working and their 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 whole lives are kids all day, cleaning all day, laundry all night, cooking, and then the kids, and then the kids, and then the kids, and it's exhausting, and you're like, and you hardly ever have. I was a stay-at-home dad myself, so I I can relate to this experience. And you hardly ever have an adult conversation with anybody. All of your conversations are, hi, dearie, okay, let's do this, let's play this game. And you're just like, that's all your experience. So the, the fact that, that people who are with kids all the time, that their identity gets tied up with them is natural. Um, and, as you say, it also can be a detriment. That is why my blog, which is MeaningfulIdeas.com, is... I've got almost 400 articles on there, and about half of them are about self-development and spirituality and finding your own inner passion and your own and loving yourself. Because half of conscious parenting, as you said, is the work that we do with ourselves, learning to love ourselves, learning to feel like we have a real place in this world. Because the more we love ourselves, the more that we chase our own passions, the more that we believe that we're that what's important to us matters, the more we're able to pass that attitude onto our kids. And to me, that's what makes that's what the real importance of it is. Did you ever see the uh, the the Wayne Dyer movie, The Shift? I did, I did not. not. I, I would I would highly recommend it. But 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 in, but and, and and it really is kind of the personification of what what kind of the question stems from is you know basically the main character is this woman who. Uh, you know, her, her, when her husband's home, you know, he's watching television or, or playing with the kids and he doesn't really have those home responsibilities. And, you know, right. a lot of people, they forget their spiritual development. They, they, they forget that, that innate, that innate, I guess, individuality within them. And they, and they, they're lost, you know, when their kids right. graduate from college, why do you think they're so emotionally broken? It's because their identities were so tied up in their kids and they, and they didn't right. take the time for themselves, you know? Right. Sure. And I'll tell you, man, when you, when... Like one of the one of the main principles of conscious parenting philosophy that I teach is to is to not punish your kids, and uh, and this is can be really hard for parents because it's the only thing we've known for generations. If your kid does something, they have to receive a consequence because if they don't receive that consequence, how are they going to learn not to do the thing? The thing is, when we teach through punishment. We create this atmosphere in which it's an adversarial relationship. And the kids are not thinking, hey, how can I be the best person I can be in this moment? The kids are thinking, hey, how can I get what I want without getting caught and punished? That's the main lesson kids learn from that. But the other side of it is, and this is going back to your question, the other side of it is when I'm in a punishment mindset that that I'm looking for, how can I reward this person and how can I punish this person so that their behavior conforms to what I want it to be? 
that is a very emotionally and spiritually draining mindset to hold for 20 years or 15 years or whenever your kid realizes, hey, this person can't punish me, control me anymore. I'm going to do whatever I want because that happens in every teen's life. At some point, they either withdraw or they get aggressive because they know you can't control them anymore. And that's an exhausting way to live, and it does drain us as individuals. But when we're always looking for how I can inspire, how I can educate, how I can connect and, and, and harmonize with my kid, that's a joyous mindset to have. And that, uh, even just that alone uplifts us as human beings in an incredible way. So conscious parenting is not only about improving the life of your child. It's also about improving your own life. Because parenting is hard enough without adding things to it that cause us pain and, and strife and struggle. And that's what I want. That's what I want more than anything. I want families to be harmonious and love and loving each other and supporting each other, to not have an, to not have fights and power struggles, because those things are not absolutely necessary. It seems well, like they, they are, are, but they, they really, really aren't. That's <laughs> you know, I it's this has just been such an eloquent and and, and beautiful. I mean. Uh, podcast on, on an unconscious parenting and and I, I'm honestly I, I've learned things and, and and I know that our listeners are going to add you know, gain so much value from this but you know are, are there any last points that you really want to draw home with with our listeners about conscious parenting sure <clears throat> um, I think I think it's important for us to recognize that you know, as I'm answering your question, the way, I, the way I thought of answering it was, what's most important to me as a parent right now? <laughs> what am I re- what's really, what's really uh, pressing on my heart as a parent right now? Because I'm always learning and growing myself. And I think one of the things that's most important for me is to recognize that whenever I have a harsh reaction with my daughter, I snapped at my daughter yesterday, just a little bit. And... Uh, I immediately regretted it, and I apologized to her for it. Mm. And then I recognized that the reason that I snapped at her is because of my own inner pain, my own inner wounds and trauma from my own childhood and my life. And and so I think the thing for me is to be as compassionate with myself as I can, to be as loving with myself as I can, for the purpose of being as compassionate and loving with my daughter as I can. And so I think the last thing that I'd want to share with parents in this like introductory phone call about conscious parenting is be as loving to yourself as you can, because from there, everything beautiful springs. And you deserve the love you didn't get as a child. You deserve, even if you think you got a lot of love, like I got a lot of love from my mom, But it's never enough because we deserve unconditional love. And there's always injuries inside of us to heal. And healing comes from love and patience and acceptance and compassion. And so the more you give those things to yourself, you know, the better everything will be. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, Vivek, thank you so much again. Uh, I want to just, you know, throw in again, his, his social media pages are Meaningful Ideas. And his blog is MeaningfulIdeas.com. So please um, be sure to, to check him out and to, to connect with him. Uh, we're, I guarantee we'll have him on again <laughs> because Wonderful. he has so much to share. But but thank you, Vivek, so much. And, uh, thank you so much, Joe. Thank you, guys. <laughs>